Number 10. The Richardson Family Murders When Jasmine Richardson was only 12 years old, she plotted the brutal murder of her entire family. And as much as I hate to say it, she is currently walking among us, a free woman. The massacre took place in April of 2006. Jasmine viciously killed both her parents and her younger brother, who was only eight years old. And here's why. It was all for a boy. Jasmine's parents, Mac and Deborah Richardson, had explicitly told their daughter that she was not to date 23-year-old Jeremy Steink. And yeah, I'm sure all parents can sympathize with this. Nobody wants their 12-year-old daughter dating a fully grown man. But when you're 12, you just don't think clearly or rationally. It's a fact. Jasmine decided the only answer to her problem was to kill her parents and her brother. But before the murders, Jasmine had been an ordinary teenager. She was described by people who knew her as happy and social. But then, Jasmine met Jeremy, who told her that he was a werewolf over 300 years old. Clearly, he did not belong in society. He transformed the child by manipulating her into wearing dark clothing, calling herself a witch, and all kinds of other crazy nonsense. He also goaded her into killing her own parents, act that they did together, slashing Mac and Deborah's throats and leaving their bodies in the basement. In 2007, Jasmine was found guilty on three counts of murder in the first degree. She was only 13, sentenced to spend the next 10 years in prison. On the other hand, Jeremy was given 25 to life without parole. Jasmine was released in 2016 and is apparently living right now in a secret location under a secret identity. Number 9. Running Over Your Dad A man was being taught how to drive by his father. The 34-year-old Colombian national had never learned how to drive throughout his entire adult life. So, his 65-year-old dad decided it was about time that he learned. The pair went to a church parking lot near Orange Blossom Drive in Naples for practice. But the driving lesson went terribly wrong. The son ended up ramming his father with the car when he hit the accelerator by accident. He had been trying to hit the brake, but he didn't know which pedal was which. He accidentally floored it and ran over his own dad. According to Florida Highway Patrol, the dad had been standing outside of the car and instructing his son on how to park properly in a parking space. This is why he wasn't physically in the car. Plus, the dad had been standing behind a parking block, thinking he would be safe even in the case of an accident. But when his son hammered the accelerator, the vehicle simply jumped over the parking block and hit his father. The dad was taken to Lee Memorial Hospital, where he ended up dying due to his injuries. And because his son didn't actually have a driver's license, he's now facing felony charges, possibly vehicular manslaughter. All the poor guy wanted to do was impress his dad by learning how to drive, but instead, he ran him over and killed him. Number 8. Sleepover Burning A boy suffered third-degree burns following the worst sleepover party ever. The kid was only 12 years old at the time of the incident. He received terrible burns to his face, chest, and back after he was attacked during the sleepover at his friend's house. According to his mother, the skin was literally hanging off his body. Here's how the burning happened. When Antonio Kemp went to take a shower, his friend surprised him with a cup of liquid to his face. He pulled back the shower curtain and threw a cup of mysterious liquid all over Antonio, immediately causing his skin to bubble and peel off his bones. But what's really crazy is that we don't know what the liquid in the cup was, if the kid had somehow gotten a hold of a chemical agent or some kind of acid. After the incident, the attacker's parents invoked the child's rights to an attorney and have kept him silent. The police are trying to investigate, but the family is blocking their investigation to the best of their ability. Poor Antonio is now totally traumatized. He has no idea why his friend threw a cup of mystery acid in his face. He's afraid to talk to anyone. He doesn't want to shower anymore, and he frequently wakes up in the middle of the night crying. He's also terrified by his new appearance. The burns to his face are so bad that doctors had to use pig skin to cover up his wounds, while Antonio's body works to regrow his own skin. Number 7. Video Game Killer In Ohio, one gamer took his favorite video game to an obscene level of obsession. It was 2007, and the game to play was Halo 3. Back then, parents didn't know what to do about kids who played too many video games. Games were seen by many as a national emergency. The parents of Daniel Petrick believed their kid was one of these troubled children who desperately needed to be separated from the video game world. So, they took away Halo 3. It proved to be a bad decision, because Daniel stood up and shot his mother and father. His mother died right there on the floor, but his father lived. Daniel went to court for the murder of his mom. During the proceedings, it came out that he was a little delusional. He had played so many video games that he'd come to believe that death was not real. Just like in video games, a person could die and then come back. He was completely off his rocker, and he was already 17 at the time of the murder. 
He should have been old enough to know the difference. The judge saw it the same way, and so he sentenced Daniel to 23 years in prison. Number 6. Dollar Store Rampage We have all seen somebody's misbehaved child throw a tantrum in a public store, but one kid in Florida has taken it to a whole new level of terrifying. According to the Daily Mail, the kid was only 10 years old when he went absolutely berserk in a Dollar General store. The kid left such a trail of destruction that shoppers were forced to flee. The child was ripping apart the displays, trashing the store, and even threatening to punch the other customers. And he was only 10. His rampage went on and on until somebody believed to be a store employee finally had enough. The employee grabbed the kid by the collar of their shirt and dragged him outside. By the time the kid was calmed down, the police had already arrived. But unfortunately, neither the store nor the police would comment on what happened to the boy after he was taken away. We don't know if the police threw him in jail, if they threw his parents in jail, or even where his parents were during the episode. The kid just ran into the store by himself and tried to tear it down. Who do you think is to blame for this crazy dollar store rampage? The kid or the parents? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 5. Alyssa Bustamante Alyssa Bustamante was the rebellious teenager who slaughtered her neighbor. Alyssa was only 15 years old when she made the horrible decision that would change multiple lives. On the outside, she looked like a totally ordinary teenager, but online, she showed herself as a dark, mysterious, and pretty evil monster. And as it turned out, that evil alter ego from the internet wasn't just an alter ego. It was Alyssa's real self. She had fantasies about doing terrible things to people, and on October 21st, 2009, she finally gave in to her sick urges. Four houses down the street from where Alyssa lived, there was a girl named Elizabeth Olton. She was only nine, but she sometimes went over to Alyssa's house to play with Alyssa and her siblings. On October 21st, Elizabeth had begged her mother to go play at Alyssa's house, but when it was six o'clock at night and Elizabeth wasn't home yet, her mom knew something had gone terribly wrong. It was the day after Elizabeth's disappearance that the FBI identified Alyssa as the killer. They found a small hole behind the house in the shape of a grave. In her defense, Alyssa told the FBI that she was simply a fan of digging random holes in her yard. But obviously, the FBI dug the hole up themselves, at which point they found Elizabeth's dead body. They also found a full confession in Elizabeth's journal, in which she detailed how she strangled young Elizabeth, stabbed a knife through her chest, then buried her in the yard. The case was open and shut. Alyssa, despite being just 15, was tried as an adult and narrowly escaped the death penalty. Her parole will come up in 30 years, at which point she may get out of jail. Number 4. Eric Smith Eric Smith was born in January of 1980. Just 13 years later, he became a murderer. According to court documents from the 90s, Eric Smith was seen as a loner. He was frequently bullied, he wore thick glasses and got beat up because of it, and he had red hair and freckles. But after being bullied for so long, something snapped in Eric's mind. On August 2, 1993, Eric lured a four-year-old boy named Derek Robbie into a remote part of the local park. There, Eric performed acts so sick and disturbing that I can't even talk about them here. At just 13 years old, he proved to be one of the most sadistic killers in American history. In that remote section of the park, Eric Smith strangled the child to death, dropped large rocks on his head, and much more. Two days after the funeral, Eric Smith admitted what he had done. In 1994, he was convicted of second-degree murder and given the maximum sentence possible, a minimum of 90 years. Ever since then, he's been denied parole multiple times. In total, the parole board has denied Eric his freedom 10 times, with the most recent being in 2020. Remember to always stop bullying in its tracks. If you see someone that needs help, stand up for them. You never know, you might save their life. Number 3. The Slender Man Killer Anissa Wire was only 12 years old when she dedicated herself to the fictional character known as Slenderman. It was in 2014 that Anissa worked together with Morgan Geyser to lure one of their 12-year-old friends, Peyton Lautner, into the forest in Wisconsin. Once they had the child deep in the woods, Morgan stabbed her with a knife 19 times while Anissa stood there and watched. It was all to impress the Slenderman, who both girls at the time believed was real. Amazingly, the victim didn't even die. After stabbing her so many times, the attempted killers helped rush her to the hospital, where she miraculously survived. In this case, not actually doing the stabbing saved Anissa from a full life locked inside a mental hospital. Also, Morgan's poor stabbing saved them both from jail time. According to Dr. John Kelman, 
who operated on the victim the day of the stabbing. If the knife had gone only a hair deeper, the girl would have died. In 2017, Anissa was sentenced to spend 25 years locked in a mental institution. But get this, she was just released partway through 2021. She has to stay home and wear a GPS ankle bracelet, but she's been freed despite her role in trying to murder one of her friends. Both Anissa and Morgan had to face the judge in adult court, both charged with first-degree attempted intentional homicide. Anissa got 25 years, while Morgan got 40, and Morgan hasn't been let out. Number 2. 14-Year-Old Kidnapper A young boy was recently arrested after a string of armed robberies and kidnappings in the D.C. area. The kid was just 14 years old when he started his crime spree with at least four accomplices. Beginning on August 24th, the kid and his friends started abducting people at gunpoint. They singled out victims who were by themselves, usually walking in the early morning or late at night. The child kidnappers, as they were literally just kids, blindfolded their victims and tied their hands with zip ties. They then forced them inside of a vehicle, drove them around the city, and sometimes roughed them up a bit. They stole the credit cards, cash, and whatever else the victim had on them at the time. They even tortured the victims to get their bank account information, allowing them to easily withdraw money from various ATMs. Imagine being rolled over by a couple of 14-year-old kids with guns. Not only would that be humiliating, it would give you a pretty grim outlook on the fate of humanity. Thankfully, the cops managed to identify and capture the one boy, though they're still looking for the others, who have somehow continued to elude the police. And number one, caught carjacking. A group of kids have been busted trying to carjack people in their own neighborhood. One of them was 11, the other was 12, and the final two were both 14. The four suspects went on a crime spree in the San Leandro area of California. Two of the suspects tried to carjack a guy in the middle of the street, only to have the guy open his car door, get out, and body slam one of the children onto the concrete. He then stepped on the kid, pinning him to the ground. The preteen wasn't so tough at that point, squealing like a pig as he tried to wiggle away. The guy then let him go, and he and his accomplice took off in their getaway vehicle. Shortly after, the police arrested both those kids and two more in a separate attempted carjacking. For whatever reason, it seems people just aren't that scared of 11-year-olds with guns, and they yet again failed to steal anyone's vehicle. The children were released to their guardians, but according to the San Leandro police, they went right back out and tried carjacking again. You would think after three failed attempts, these kids would just give up and go back to playing video games. What's the craziest story of a kid gone wrong that you've ever heard? Let us know about it in the comments, and thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel, and check back again for the latest awesome videos. See you next time.